¿Qué tal amigos? Pues estamos aquí de nuevo con una nueva entrevista en esta especie de previa en este split de verano de la Superliga Y ya han pasado algunos invitados por aquí y hoy le toca al turno del Fútbol Club Barcelona Esports Y estamos con uno de sus nuevos fichajes, estamos con Hades uh, Hades, first of all, thank you very much for your time, for your kindness to be here And thank you for being here, how, you, uh, how do you feel? How are you? I'm feeling good, thank you for the invite and yeah, mm -hmm. we're gonna see, like I'm ready for the split though Like I can't wait for it to start Monday finally, mm -hmm. after such a long off season man Yeah <laughs> why, why, why do people, because people do believe that uh, off-season between splits is not that long, but I do believe that for the teams who are <clears throat> not in playoffs, it's like too much. Yes, well, like as a player that was like last year in Newcomb, where we had like reached everything and then into semifinals of few masters, I can guarantee you that off-season is way too short. But now being on the other side and losing and not even making it to playoffs, mm -hmm. like two months is too long of not playing. It's way too long. It's it's just too boring. Like you like as a player, you just want to keep competing, and if you can't compete, like you just wait for it to start again. Mm -hmm. You you have mentioned uh, Ukam. Uh, you were last played on Mad Lions Madrid. How was for you that kind of almost totally changed because you were on a pretty successful uh, project, I would say, because mm -hmm. Ukam reached both Super League finals, one lifting the trophy, one <laughs> losing, and even you get on those semifinals on 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 EU Masters against K Corp. And suddenly you are on Mad Lions on a pretty different project. How was to broke with that project, which was a or from the or from the outside looked like a, a pretty familiar one? Oof. Well, I mean, it was it was a rough one for sure because, like, as a player, I've always been on the winning side. To be honest, like even before I joined like LVP, like in the minor regions, like in Benelux, I was so used to like winning or at least come second. So I was always playing like everything. And then like last split in Mad Lions, where we just. Like it, it, we we didn't fit together. Like it didn't click. Like we just couldn't get together. You know, like we couldn't get the gameplay together. Well, I do believe that all the players were like good that we had. For some reason, it just didn't work. And then, yeah, you just focus as much as you can on yourself, and you improve like as a person outside of the game, inside of the game. But you can't do much more than that, I think. Mm -hmm. Overall, how was your split on on Mad Lions with you? Because obviously, it didn't work as 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 you mentioned. Because Mad Lions has a pretty a uh, pretty mm -hmm. well-known organization, both in LVP and both in and in in, in in LSE, it's like a mandatory to at least reach playoffs and and fight yeah. for the trophy. But it, in that case, it it didn't it didn't went the way it used to happen. What happened there? Well, I mean, yeah, like it is definitely like a failure. Like it was just a failure. Like we all had the uh, the thought and the idea of going like to playoffs, and then we see in playoffs how good we do. You know, like we all had like hopes of like being able to go to finals at least you know like at the start of the split because like that's like always the goal but then like during the split like it didn't work so yeah the only thing like I could learn eventually was just like with the stuff we had there like learning like more about myself like mentally and physically as well just to be in a better shape mm -hmm. because as a team it as I said like it just didn't work as 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 usually as it often happens to the teams who do not reach expectations, uh, everybody mm -hmm. start start talking about the teams that didn't make it to the playoffs, both Mad Lions Madrid, Ucam, Giants, and and Team Heretics. How was your season for you? It was too much offers. You were hundred percent convinced that you wanted to change the project, or your season was just like okay, I'm about to sit a bit to relax, a, bit, a, a, a little bit of chilling, and then I'm about to listen uh, a few offers. I mean, like for me, like at least, like for sure, some things needed to change because if that didn't happen, it would have made no sense because we already figured out that it was not gonna work. So, yeah, we need to change. And then, like mm -hmm. eventually, like Barcelona came in, and yeah, I mean, from my previous team last year, like there was Dredi, and besides that, I think having players like Deadly and two hours next to me on carry positions like should make the game really easy for me again. Mm -hmm. I have a huge belief in this team. You almost answered one of one of my following <laughs> questions, which was which was how much important or how less important was the was the factor that Dridi, your former teammate on, from Ucam, was already on the team. I mean, like in the end, like you always decide for yourself, but it was of course has some influence because like we already like have the synergy, like I know how he is as a teammate, like I know his positives, I know his negatives. And that makes it a lot easier to make a decision because most of the times when you join a team, you only know positives of players, you know, mm -hmm. like you only know like how good they are, but you don't know how they are as teammates. Mm -hmm. So uh, that for sure helps for me. For sure. 
uh, you were on Mad Lions Madrid, and suddenly Barcelona uh, gets on knocks on your door. What do you think about uh, traditional esports organizations who make into the esports scene? Because time after time, at the beginning, people was a little bit hesitating because sometimes the results were not as expected as they perform on the traditional field. But suddenly Barcelona on their first split, they become second on they became second on on regular split and they made it to the EU Masters on third spot. What do you think about the what, what do you think about the organization when they knock on the on your door? I think it's beautiful because mm -hmm. like as a kid I was playing football and then like well yeah when you're a kid like everyone knows about Barcelona because like that's the club to go to and that's like the dream you know so like in the end I can say I made it. It's mm -hmm. true League of Legends but that's still <laughs> that's that's still beautiful you know like I can still wear these colors now with with pride and Like I, I'm so happy about it. Like and, and my family too. Like they support it a lot, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity and the chance for playing for them. And I think it's a good thing that uh, football clubs are getting invested in it as well, because I think it's just a beautiful thing to see to get like the big clubs joining. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how many offers did you have on on your off season, but was uh, to remain on Superliga one of your priorities, and why? Um, yeah, that for sure was one of my priorities because I think the Superliga, like especially how I experienced last year, but also like I want to still experience it this year as well, like the like playing on stage and playing in front of the fans, like that feeling in Superliga, like it's always so supportive and yeah, it's just a great feeling to keep playing it also because it's like a major region and like we didn't win your Masters for a long time still, but uh, it's time to, to give Spain a new Masters again, so like <laughs> that's the goal for me. Mm -hmm. uh, now you have stepped into FC Barcelona Esports and you have made it with, with with the rest of your teammates and with the rest of the organization in the last few days. What do you mm -hmm. think, what do you think about the organization? How is it from the inside and how is the environment between the teammates, between the organization, between the people on the top? How is the how is everything working? I mean, so far, like the relationship with the teammates, I would say like it's really really good actually. Like we are all getting along really well together, which. I prioritize really high as well. I think you need to have like a good bonding outside of the game and not just have like five good players that mm -hmm. play League of Legends and then just see how it's gonna work because uh, yeah, I just don't think that's how League should be played. And then in Barcelona, like we had talks and they also value like uh, team environment really high. So that also like got my attention, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, same for we did in UCAM, like where the team environment was so high, I think it's so much easier to improve as well. Because once you can be like honest with each other and it doesn't matter and you can just say whatever you want, that's how you really start improving, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from you, you are not the only new one new guy on the team because FPS <laughs> is, is the other new ro is the other new guy on the on the roster. And actually, a lot of people talks about when a team works well, that comes from especially from the communication between or the synergy between the support and the jungle. How does it feel to play with FPS and how is your relationship going on those first working days? Yeah, it's what you say, like, it's just the start. And uh, like, as I mentioned before, so far, so good. No problems, no problems at all. I think <laughs> we're having a we're having a good relationship so far. I mean, of course, like, there's things we need to work and we're not there yet, but that's also why we are practicing, of course. But I mean, when, when Fios was playing in G2 Arctic, I always thought he was like a really solid player. Of course, I didn't know him as a person, so that's what I do now. And I think like we click really well. We have the same kind of humor. We like to talk the same way. And I think it's gonna help a lot in showing our performance. In LVP or so. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from the esports section, uh, FC Barcelona, as, as we can see on, on on social media, it's a club that uh, likes to rely a lot of. Apart from the esports scene, like to do a lot of sports uh, events outside of the game. Do you think is that mm -hmm. something that fits a lot to you? Do you think that th this is something K for a good development as a player as a as a whole group to do something out of the rift, not only just in the rift? Yes, yeah, it's like this is like part of the team environment again. I think it's really important to do like team activities, like go to a football match, go to do bowling, go have team dinners, go do whatever, you know, but like do things together. So you also get to know each other outside of the game instead of just playing league in front of your PC for 12 hours a day and then that's it. And then you don't really speak to each other. But like by forcing everyone to go out and have a good time, like it's going to be so much easier as well. That's why I value like the team activities and the team environment so high. Do you think this is something that the League of Legends players nowadays is something that he values more than in the past and should be something that should be something to be taken into account on a more reliable way? 
Yes, I think so. I think like it's getting better and better lately though, because like at the start I don't think there was like a lot at all. But mm -hmm. now, like the last last years, it's getting just better and better by making sure. I mean, COVID didn't help, that's for sure. But now it's getting better and better again, and I think that a lot of teams should just value it way higher to also have like hobbies and do things together outside of the game. Mm -hmm. Talking a little bit, a little bit more about uh, the summer split on Superliga. Uh, you had the new guy on the roster, but this roster or the core of the roster that remains, uh, mm -hmm. as we said before, made it to the EU Masters on the third spot and made it into the second spot on on regular season. Do you feel like uh, I don't know if if we can call it an extra pressure, but do you feel like the or do you have the feeling that at least as a roster and as an organization you have to repeat that repeat that kind of results, even you were not on that roster before. Um, yeah, I think so. I think I think you have to like at least do kind of the same because else it's just a failure, uh, in my opinion. So like, of course, it comes with some pressure, but I mean, I like pressure. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you feel more comfortable on pressure, or do you think do you yeah, perform better? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I think so. Yeah, when people pressure me to play good, I'm gonna play better. That's <laughs> at least in my opinion. So I really like to be under pressure. I think it's a good thing as well. You can look at look at caps, look at him. Nice, nice, nice mirror to watch on. Actually, <laughs> um, you start on you start on Monday against Koi, if I'm not wrong. Uh, mm. One of those rosters that it's pretty, pretty high, but no matter what they do. But of course, we cannot avoid the the reality. They signed a pretty good, decent roster, actually. Or they, I would say, they built a really, they did a really good signings. I would say. But overall, the feeling is that both in spring the level was good, but everybody agrees that in summer the level, at least for what we know about the new signings on the league level should increase a little bit more. The, what do you think about the overall level of the league? I f agree with you. I think the overall level of the league improved like like a bit though. Because I think every team is getting closer and closer to like the what Fnatic was in spring. Mm -hmm. Because like they were by far the favorites, you know, like there's nothing to say about it. And I think like with more good teams in LVP now, everyone is going to be like even more eager to improve as well, which makes the competition way harder, but also way more fun because I think like there's not like really like a single team that's like going to be like last, you know, like I feel like almost every team can compete. Mm -hmm. And that's also what makes it beautiful. Mm -hmm. Talking a little bit about the meta game, because we start on Superliga on patch 12.9, <laughs> if I'm not wrong, but yeah. at the second mm -hmm. week, which is third journey or third day of the regular seat mm -hmm. we're uh, on the regular split we're gonna step on uh 10 point uh 12.10 which is that big bb change <laughs> on the durability on the resistance and the armor on the healing mm -hmm. and uh, all that stuff everybody's talking about what is about to be played on top on mid about the in uh, uh enchanted supports about those hyper carries but what happens in, on jungle what do you think is about to be played or what do you think that could be strong as long as you can tell me of course because we are, we are not going about a spoiler stretch for for next week yeah i mean well and now honestly i don't really know still what is the best as well in jungle i think it's also really hard to say because the patch has been out for like one day now and yeah. like in one day you can't really like figure out what's good and bad because like the patch is so big so it's hard to say i don't think in jungle it's going to change like too much to be honest though like it's gonna change a bit like some champs are gonna be stronger some champs are gonna be weaker but overall i think it shouldn't swift the meta for jungle that much i think for other roles it's a bigger patch mm -hmm. do you think that that kind of changes which is i in my opinion uh looks like more uh a season patch than into a mid-season <laughs> patch but uh riot goes that way uh do you <laughs> think that that kind of change was needed on the game because I have the feeling that the ch the game was the same last those last three two years. Um, yeah, I mean, like you can say like it was needed, but in another way, I also feel like the game was kind of in a balanced way right now. There was no role that was like so useless or anything. But I don't think like it like necessarily needed a change, but I think it's good that we got a change though, mm -hmm. because as what you say, like the meta has been like the same for so long. So I think every player wanted something new. But I don't think we had too much to complain about with how the meta was as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and stepping into the last questions from the interview, on those those are more uh, focused on the on the personal opinion, which are those I, I love the most. In your case, <laughs> your next answer must not be FC Barcelona, and you. Oh, uh, of course. Of course. And the uh, the the question is, which is that roster? because of your info or because of what do you think about the players, what do you think is the roster from Superliga on summer 2022 is about to perform better than the expectations are? 
Who do you think is the Better than dark the horse on the competition? Um, let's see, let's see. The dark horse, I mean, like the easy answer would be Yukam. Uh -huh. Because like, I think they got like a, a decent team now, you know, like they have some good signings this year and because mm -hmm. like they got 10th in spring, like I feel like they can only do better, you know, so that's like the easy answer. Mm -hmm. But let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking. It's like there are a lot of favorites now, you know, so, so mm -hmm. it's hard to say. It's like, it's like the question is like, who is that <laughs> roster? People, mm -hmm. they do not believe too much on them. And for what you know, and from do you know about the players or just taking a look on the players that confirm their roster, do you think that they can perform better than the expectations are? Yeah, I mean, I, I if I was not Barcelona, I would say Barcelona. But mm -hmm. <laughs> because, like, I mean, I think everyone has, like, the top three, like, favorites. That's going to be, like, Fnatic, Giants, and Koi. So those are not even possible to be Dark Horses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd say Yukem. I'd, I'd okay. go with Yukem. Like, okay. I don't think the other ones are Dark Horses. I think it's going to be Yukem for sure, yeah. Okay, and on the other part of the coin, what do you think is the roster who's about to perform worse than the people expect? Um, I would say Bisons, because okay. I think like uh, they did so good in spring, and mm -hmm. they are going to have like the same expectations for themselves, and the fans of Bisons are going to have the same. And I really think with the competition getting better, it's going to be hard for them to get the uh, same results as they did in spring. So I think they're going to do worse than expected. Okay, and last question. Uh, who is the jungle from the Superliga? <laughs> being new or being somebody you already have played against, who is the jungle in Superliga you love to play against and why? Yeah, well, I think that's the easy answer on, on Maxi here because mm -hmm. he is, in my opinion, in Superliga, like by far uh, the best jungler in Superliga right now. And I don't think the second one comes even in close. So yeah, I can't wait to match him. Also because like he is like with two of my old teammates, mm -hmm. and I also like I know the way how Crusher coaches in jungle. So like that makes Maxi an even better player, and curious to see like how I can do against him this time. Okay, okay, we take we're gonna take those those notes on that <laughs> on that on that section. Ades, thank you very much for your time for your kindness again, and hopefully you can make as pos as much possible a a good split on summer. Thank you yes, for let's time. go. Can't wait for it. No problem. Anytime, bro. Anytime. Okay, we're gonna see. We're gonna see each other more and more. Uh, yes. And time. Y a vosotros chicos ya lo sabéis. Si os ha gustado la entrevista, le dais un buen like, un buen sub, y nos vemos en la siguiente entrevista. Adiós.